Hello, and welcome to Fading Audio. In this tutorial, we will learn how to use fade cues to change levels in audio cues. The same principles also apply to fading mic cues, but we're going to demonstrate using audio cues. To begin with, let's create an audio cue, target some music for it to play, and then make a fade cue. Fade cues require a target, which is the cue that the fade cue will adjust. You can assign a target by dragging and dropping the audio cue right onto the fade cue, or you can specify a cue number in the target field here. Now we've made our fade cue and given it a target, but it is still a broken cue because we have not activated any parameters for the fade cue to adjust. A simple click on the master volume will activate this fade cue to change to those settings. Let's look at the fade cues in Spectre tabs going from left to right. First off, as with all cues, is the Basics tab. Then the Curve Shape tab, which lets you adjust the shape of the fade curve. The default fade shape is an S-curve. Also known as the Ease In, Ease Out curve. You can adjust that and make a custom curve to suit your needs. Choose Custom Curve from the drop-down menu, and then add control points to your fade curve by clicking on the yellow line. You can delete a control point by selecting the control point and pressing Delete. You can click the Reset to Default Shape button to remove all the control points. The curve on the left applies to values which the fade cue is increasing, and the curve on the right applies to values which the fade cue is decreasing. The Duration field shows the length of the fade. It's the same as the Action field in the cue list, and you can change the duration by typing into either one. If you check the Stop Target When Done checkbox, the target cue will be stopped when the fade is complete. This is probably most useful when you're making a fade out. The next tab is Levels, where you specify which audio levels you wish to fade and what their final volume will be. We've already set the master volume to minus infinity, so in theory, we have successfully programmed a fade out and stop of our target audio. Let's run the cues and find out. A fade cue can change any number of levels simultaneously, and you can specify a different volume for each level. When you adjust a level, it will turn yellow, which means that level is active in the fade cue. Only active levels will be faded when the fade cue runs. Gray levels are inactive and do not change when the fade cue runs. You can activate or deactivate a level by clicking on it. The drop-down menu in the top left corner of the tab lets you choose whether the fade is absolute or relative. An absolute fade, which is the default type, sets active levels to the exact volumes you specify every time, no matter what the current level of the target audio cue is. So, let's set the fade cue to absolute and set the master level to minus 10. If the audio cue starts playing at minus 20 and then we run the fade, the level goes up to minus 10. But if the audio cue starts playing at minus 5, the fade takes the level down to minus 10. In either case, the final volume is minus 10. The other option for fade cues is relative, which adds or subtracts level. In this case, the final level after running the fade depends on the initial level of the audio cue. So if we take that same fade cue with the master level set to minus 10 and make it a relative fade, it's going to subtract 10 dB from whatever level the target audio is playing at. If the audio cue starts playing at minus 20, the fade cue takes the level down to minus 30. And if the audio cue starts playing at minus 5, the fade cue takes the level down to minus 15. That's relatively useful. Absolutely. There's another Stop Target When Done checkbox here, but it's the same as the one in the Curve Shape tab. You can click the Set From Target button, 
or use the keyboard shortcut Command Shift T to snap all levels in the fade queue to the levels of the target queue, but keep them deactivated. This is a convenient way to keep track of the levels from which you will be fading. Click the Set All Silent button to return the fade to a pristine state. Click the Gangs button to assign gangs to any of the level controls. Each control in the same gang will be adjusted together when you change the volume of one member of the gang. Now we will update the file this queue is targeting to a more fitting example. The Live Preview button toggles between red and green. If you click the button to switch it to red, adjustments made to the fade queue will not be heard until the fade is run. If the target of the fade queue has audio effects, you'll see them listed here with a checkbox and an edit button. By default, the checkbox will be unchecked, meaning that the fade queue will not adjust parameters of that effect. To control an effect with the fade queue, just check the box. Unlike fading audio levels, there is no way to activate or deactivate individual parameters of an audio effect of a fade. You either fade the whole effect or none of it. Thus, to avoid accidentally adjusting more parameters than you intend, you can click Set Audio Effects from Target, which copies the levels of every parameter in every audio effect from the target queue and puts them into the fade queue. If you don't click it, the parameter levels in the fade queue will be set to the built-in default levels for each audio effect. You can click the Edit button to adjust the effect. It's important to understand that when you click Edit to view the effect, you're not opening the same window as when you click Edit in the audio queue. This is what you see when you click Edit to view the effect in the Fade queue. And this is what you see when you click Edit to view the effect in the Audio queue. It's easy to get confused about which effect window applies to which queue. Take your time and be sure that you're making changes in the place that you intend to. Once you're sure you're looking at the right window, you can make any adjustments you like. This is a situation in which Live Fade Preview can be very helpful. It's turned on by default, but if you've turned it off, you might want to consider turning it back on when adjusting audio effects in a fade queue. That way, you can make adjustments in the fade queue while the target audio queue is running so that you can hear those adjustments in real time and know what you're doing. When you're done, Close the editor window. Now, when you run the fade queue, the parameters you adjusted will smoothly fade from their initial values set in the audio queue to the values you set in the fade queue. If you're new to effects editing, try starting with the AU Graphic EQ effect. Create a new audio cue with a piece of music, create a fade cue, target the audio cue, and add the AU graphic EQ effect. Try it, it's fun. Then open the effect editor for the fade cue. Make a dramatic adjustment. Play the audio cue. And then the fade cue. While fading in, fading out, and adjusting the overall volume of an audio cue are probably the most common uses of a fade cue, 
You can also use a fade cue to pan an audio cue between different outputs. The best way to understand this is to walk through a simple example. Let's do it. Okay, let's say you have an audio cue that targets a mono track, and you want to pan it from one speaker to another. QLab will recognize that the track has one channel, and one row will appear in the Device and Levels tab in the inspector for that audio cue. In the audio cue, set the level for the first speaker, which is cue output 1, the first column of the matrix, to 0, and set the level for the second speaker, cue output 2, the second column in the matrix, to minus infinity. Note that in an audio cue, QLab treats a blank field in the audio level matrix as minus infinity. Now, create a fade cue which targets the audio cue and reverse the levels. Set the first output to minus infinity and set the second output to zero. When you play the audio cue, you will hear it exclusively from output one. When you run the fade cue, it will fade down in output one and fade up in output two over the same duration. Remember, one fade cue can affect as many controls as you wish. If you had an audio track with eight channels, and instead of two speakers you had ten, you could enter values in the matrix or adjust the sliders to have different channels come up or down in different outputs. A key concept here is that if multiple fade cues share a target, but each fade cue has different active controls, then those fade cues can run simultaneously without interfering with each other. Because of this, in the scenario with an 8-channel audio cue fading amongst 10 speakers, very complex fades can be achieved by using simultaneous fade cues with different active controls, different curve shapes, and different durations. It's all so simultaneously technical and artistic. Somebody give this guy a Tony. Is it too soon? Too soon. QLab has a sort of special undo command that applies only to fade cues, called revert fade action. You can find this command under the tools menu when a fade cue is selected, or you can use the keyboard shortcut command shift R. When revert fade action is invoked on a fade cue, after that fade cue has been run, QLab reverts the levels of the target of the selected fade cue to whatever they were before the fade ran. Only adjustments that the selected fade cue caused are reverted. That'll get you started with fading audio. You can check out some examples in the audio effects and mic cues tutorials also. To learn more about fading video parameters, check out the tutorial called Fading Video.